Hey YouTubers, Easy as Pie here again today. I'll be showing you how to make a wooden oh. pail. One of the first things you'll need to do is round yourself a whole bunch of wood. I had this sitting around from a previous project. Um, some of it's already uh, sealed. I'll probably be taking a lot of that off in the process here, but um, maybe it'll come in handy. So the first thing you'll need to do is figure out how big your bucket needs to be. So I decided I wanted roughly uh, 12 inch um, inner diameter on the top side and a 10 inch inner diameter on the bottom which would roughly equate to a 13 and a half and 11 and a, half and a half exterior diameter just based on a 3 quarter inch um, wood thickness and then just using some basic math just the pi times diameter equals circumference I just multiply these numbers by pi and you get your approximate circumference which would be 42.4 and 36.1 inches, roughly. And the next thing you want to do is figure out how many pieces you want to uh, make your bucket out of. Whenever you're making um, a circular object like this, um, you're going to have roughly uh, 180 degrees worth of angles. Um, so based on 20 pieces divided by 180, you come out with 9 degrees. Now in the other videos I was watching, they didn't really explain why that is. Basically, the easiest thing to remember when you're making these buckets is the number of pieces you're going to make the uh, outer wall of your bucket out of. Divide 180 by that and that will give you your outside corner angle. So 20 times 9 is 180. Pretty easy. So. It's a good number to go with. So once you know the number of pieces you've got, you can determine the approximate widths, top and bottom widths. So the top diameter is 42.4 inches. Divided by 20 gives you roughly 2.12 inches on the top side. On the bottom side, it's 36.1 inches. Divided by 20 gives you 1.806 inches. Now, if you convert those over um, to fractions, which are a little bit more usable, 2.12 uh, is roughly uh, 2 and an eighth, and uh, 1.806 is actually 1 and 13 sixteenths, but just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going with uh, 1 and 7 eighths, which would be 14 sixteenths, so um, it'll take a little bit of math on your part to figure out how big you want your bucket to be, but if you know these simple rules, you can make pretty much any sized, um, simple, cone-shaped pail. I also determined that I wanted my pail to be approximately 12 inches tall. So I'm going to cut 18 of these boards at 12 inches in length, um, cutting both ends to make sure they're squared up and I don't have any wonky cuts from my previous project. And I will also need two boards that are a bit longer than the rest. Um, somewhere between 14 and 15 inches probably should buy you enough room in order for you to have a place to attach a rope to this pail if you so choose. If you don't want that feature just go with all at whatever particular height you prefer um, but I'm choosing to go with the, the attachment point for a rope handle. Just a quick reminder I like to always mention proper personal protective equipment. Um, Earplugs and safety glasses are a must in all projects. Um, I spent a lot of my younger years uh, avoiding these things for some reason. I don't know. I, I was, I guess, a little bit more convenient at the time, um, but I was definitely putting myself at risk. And after several years, I started realizing I was, in fact, losing some of my hearing. So now, every time I fire up one of these pieces of equipment, use these guys. So here I'm square, simply squaring up one end, flipping it over, and cutting these at approximately 12 and 1 8 inch. I'm throwing in the extra 8 inch there just so I have a little bit of room for sanding, planing, whatever I need to do at the end. So, just a personal preference. So here are my 18 staves, cut down to 12 and an eighth inch. And my two additional staves here cut down at 14 and an eighth inch. So the next thing you want to do is start ripping these boards down to whatever um, the widest point of your board is. 
uh, as far as the cross section goes here. So, like I said earlier, I determined that my two widths were uh, two and one eighth, which is what I've ripped this down to, and the thinnest point will be one and seven eighths. And the next step, I'll be showing you how to make a jig in order to rip these down a little bit quicker. It's worth mentioning that as I'm ripping these down, I'm actually trying to remove as much of the imperfections from the wood as possible, whether that be knots or curled wood or um, just anything that you might foresee being an issue as you start to uh, file and uh, plane down these edges. Next, you'll want to cut your chime. This is where the bottom of your bucket will rest. Um, the easiest way to do this would be with a dado blade, um, or if you just have a single blade, you just have to make a second pass to widen this a bit. So you'll probably want this about a quarter of an inch wide. Now, when I was watching a few videos, I came across a, a video, I think it was from the Swiss Heritage Foundation, something like that. Um, but that's kind of what inspired me to actually carry through with this. I watched an older man make one of these, and he had a hand tool that actually uh, ground out this entire channel here. It was pretty amazing to watch, but I don't have that special tool, so I will be working with what I've got. So now that I've got all my chimes cut, I can move on to the next step. And what that will be is uh, angling these edges inward and um, down to a point here. Um, and like I said, I wanted two and one eighths inch down here and one and seven eighths inch down here. So I'm gonna have to take off an inch gradually all the way to each end. And the easiest way to do that is just to make yourself a jig. So on the first pass, um, what I'm going to do is slide my board in like this with this end, end against the rail or the guard and I just put a little wedge in there so this will rest within the guard leaving an eighth inch to be cut off now on my second pass I'll need to reorient the board with the chime at the top and this time there's two eighth inch board or uh, pieces in there in order uh, to get the desired eighth inch gap. Now I'll just run all my boards through and they should be cut properly. Now I should mention that my uh, table saw was in fact set at nine degrees there as I was uh, pushing that first set through with a jig um, and as you'll see it gave it a nice um, angle to that one side so now we'll pass through on the second jig um, completing the interior angles so we can uh, put these all together. All right, well I'm not going to show you how to push this through uh, with one hand here, but I will uh, hold my camera and just kind of show you what's going on here with the second jig. Um, so with this board, it's got the quarter inch um, extension there at the top and the board is firmly seated in there and push through chime first again and what's doing is just ripping off this piece uh, creating a taper to this uh, the stave here um, so that's really all there is to it just keep going through you'll have 20 of these to do so here if you'd like um, you can get a bit more detailed with these um, if you don't really consider care about how uh, porous or how sturdy these things are, you could probably start putting these together um, as they are. Um, but if you would like them to be maybe, say, watertight, now would be the time to start looking at uh, how well your angles line up. Now, as you can see, there is a significant gap here. Um, it's maybe a little bit less than a sixteenth, but all you'd have to do is go and knock down the inside edge at the top and bottom and you should get a better fit and you can do it out with a plane or whatever type of tools you might have access to. So I've used the hand plane and I've just knocked down the top and bottom edges just a little bit um, and you'll see that the gap is significantly smaller. Now if you decide to go this route you'll need to make sure to number all these and as you put them together make sure they're fitting properly um, and test fit them with your rings. So. I have decided that I don't want to go that far um, and I just like it to fit together and if it leaks a little bit of water that's A-OK -okay with me. I have decided that I'd like the exterior of my pail to have 
a bit of a rounded surface and not be quite so boxy. So what I've done is I've just um, made my own little impromptu bench block here and I'm using the hand plane and just taking the edges off these. Additionally, you can dowel these, uh, each of these staves. So what I've done is I've just gone and uh, drawn a line at approximately the same place on every board, drilled it out, and then actually cut my own little dowels. Uh, they're pretty easy. Uh, this is actually the way the Swiss maker that I was watching was doing this. And I was pretty fascinated by just how easy he was making these little dowels. By the time you go out, mess around buying the particular dowel you need, uh, cutting them down to size and then recutting, you could probably have cut hundreds of these little uh, dowels on your own. And it's amazing how well they actually work. So I think I've decided to go this route and dowel the entire bucket. All my staves are doweled, and I will now begin to uh, kind of rough assemble this bucket. Alrighty, so here is the uh, main structure of the bucket put together. And what I did here is I just took a bit of uh, what was um, clothesline just left over from a previous project, and I repurposed it. I just put a um, clove hitch on here. Um, but what that does is it uh, it makes it so you can cinch this up and it kind of locks back in on itself. So it's pretty useful for this particular project. It hasn't completely cinched up my pail, uh, but it has uh, got it into the shape that I want it. Now I'll begin making the bottom. Um, so I will just uh, be doweling together uh, three more boards to make one large surface and then I will um, create a circle on this that matches the the boards are now doweled uh, I've taken them apart um, but previously they were together and I have my approximate shape of the base that I will need to cut out so now I will cut this out well I probably should have just done this in the first case measured the interior diameter of the chase and then built this little contraption here but all I really did is just uh, took a little piece of wood, measured the approximate uh, diameter divided by two to make my radius, and then just kind of uh, draw this line around in the circle all the way around. But I will use this to clean up the edges uh, and make it a bit more circular. Now that I have a decent circle, I'll be going around the edges uh, with a plane uh, just to get that the outside edge down to just a little bit under uh, maybe a quarter inch, maybe right at a quarter inch, because we have to get this to fit inside the chase inside of the bucket right down here. So uh, whatever your width is on that is what you want the outside of that bottom to be, or pretty close to. Here is the bottom in various states of completion. So as you saw earlier, this is just a, a piece that's just been cut out. And then the next step I go and I uh, hand plane down the edges to get as much of the material removed. And then from there, what I've been doing is just using a uh, small drum sander. Here's one of the belts there. Um, just to get as much of that material as possible off before I go to the final stage. And what that is, is it's simply a piece of much harder wood, oak in this case. And you'll take this and you'll pass the edge right through this bevel here and what that does is it compresses the wood and gives you a nice seal between your chase and the bottom of your uh, pail. So for my pail I've decided to use this uh, heavy gauge copper wire as the uh, the loop or hoop for this. So I've got it on there, it's pretty tight, now I'm just going to push it pretty darn close to the top uh, to get myself a really snug fit and to pull these staves all them together. Now I've got my lid in the bottom and what I'm going to do is either really loosen up this rope here so it gives my staves a lot more slack so they can pull out and lift the entire lid up into place and then tighten it or I might even take this rope entirely off just depending on how much trouble the staves are giving me. Alright so you can see the bottom of the bucket is put in and I also got a little bit carried away and <laughs> just kind of put the whole thing together. So once you get the bottom in, all you really need to do is set your pail on its side and use a, a wood mallet or a hammer or something and just kind of uh, 
pound the uh, the rim of that lid into the chase all the way around and just kind of roll it as you do it and then once you think you've got it seated in there pretty well you make your next next hoop for this um, and what I did is I just made it approximately the, the same width as uh, this outside um, edge here whenever it was about as tight as I could possibly get it and then I just kind of banded it on there I twisted over that loop put it on there and then pounded it down uh, just with a hammer and a piece of wood and got it down as far as I could until it would not go any further and then I just put a, a couple staples in there um, I've seen a lot of these hoops they seem to stay on by themselves I didn't want to run the risk after all this work putting this thing together it's just uh, I was too proud of it uh, to worry about something like that happening so <laughs> um, and then finally I just popped in a couple holes in your longer staves here and then just ran a bit of that uh, that cord that I was actually using to hold the entire thing together I kind of repurposed it for a handle so I'll uh, take one more shot of this so here's a quick shot from a little bit further back give you an idea of the shape and the size this would hold quite a bit of pretty much anything you want to carry besides water it would definitely leak now keep in mind this is my first pail your first probably won't be fantastic either but I was pretty darn proud of it so I hope this video has helped you and if you like it go ahead and like the video um, check out some of my other videos. I try and do fun stuff and post it for other people to learn. Thanks for watching.